What's up everyone, Nature Hacker back with another Ashes of Creation video. And again, I just want to say, you know, even though I'm bringing up exploits in the game, it's because I care about the game and I want them to get these uh, game design principles correct so we can have a great game. I'm a huge fan of EverQuest. Been waiting for a game like EverQuest um, ever since 1999, I suppose, or, you know, ever since 2000, 2001 when the game started going downhill. Um, but, um, so I have played other games from, for instance, EverQuest. Last time I talked about a game I played in 2011, uh, it was free to play, uh, um, MMO. Uh, and, um, so last time I talked about, um, this here, and I actually added another, uh, location here, T8. Um, but these are all just hypothetical points of interest in the world, um, that people would want to fast travel to. And, um, I said that in, the, uh, when the game launches, uh, guilds will require everybody to have eight accounts so they can pull themselves to each of these locations as the guild would require. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about an even more, I think, powerful exploit, and that is to use each character in each account. Um, so basically last time we assumed that there would only be one character per account that would be doing anything um, but I think that can even be eight times more efficient than that and basically what I'm going to propose here is how a clan could dominate or a clan or a guild I guess is what they call them here can dominate um, the entire game with just eight burner accounts and I want to show you how uh, they could do that here and you know it could be eight burner accounts it could be 16 burner accounts it could be 32 burner accounts the point is is that they can multi they can this is just eight burner accounts this is just 120 dollars a month for i mean any top level guild would easily spend 120 dollars a month to dominate the entire game so i'm going to show you how they can basically do that and you might say well the cooldown is going to fix it and then i'm going to basically tell you that they can just multiply this they can instead of having eight they could have 16 to get around the cooldown you know if the cooldown is 12 hours they could have instead of eight of these accounts um there could be 16 and so that way instead of having a 12 hour cooldown they'll only have a six hour cooldown um but anyway we can get to that later but i just want to show you how this would work so the clan would have eight accounts so you know here's account one here account two account three you know these are all vertical account four or five six seven eight and then there's eight character slots. I'm assuming in each account there's eight character slots. Probably that's about average for most games. Seems like everything is eight in Ashes of Creation, so this would make sense. Um, so you have eight character slots. So on account one, you have the first character and T1. So that would be, you know, this location, T1 right here. So you have account one, character one is in T1. Okay, and he, he logs off there, so he's always there when needed. Um, account 2 also has their first character in T1. Account 3 has a character in T1, blah, blah, blah. So you have eight characters in T1. Okay, so now the, each of these eight characters will have eight completely separate families. So, and those, those pe family members will be um, just, you know, players um, in the guild at some point. You know, these are just players in the guild will be their family. So this character has eight players in their family, this character has eight players in their family, this character has eight players in their family, etc. So when what the guild can do, if they want to dominate the game, is they log in all eight of these accounts with eight players in T1, and they summon their entire families to come to T1. That can basically bring an entire raid of 64 characters to T1 instantly. Okay, so, you know, um, and again, then uh, character two of each of these accounts could be in T2, as we see T2, oh, okay, T2 is right here. So eight accounts, each with one character logged out in T2. When they want the guild to come to T2, they log in all eight of these accounts on character number two, and they can summon 64 people into the raid to come instantly. All right, like I was saying, you know, so and, and so on. So you can have this for all eight of these locations um, on this map. 
So basically, a guild would only need eight accounts to be able to summon raid an entire raid to any one of these points on the map. So I hope that shows you that this system can be and will be exploited in ways that some of us could have never imagined. Um, and so that's this is $120 for the entire clan to dominate the game. I think every top level guild is going to want to do this. And let's say they make the cooldown 12 hours and let's say you know the guild wants to be able to to do this every six hours and then you just have two of these setups of eight accounts so again that's only uh 240 dollars for the entire guild is not a lot of money to dominate the game let's say they make it seven days cooldown for this then guess what they would have seven sets of these eight accounts that would be you know what 840 or something like that $800 again for the entire guild $800 a month is not a lot you know let's say everybody had to chip in to be in the guild you know or, or you know everybody could just have to need to have their own set of eight accounts that they could do this you know they could have almost you know if you have 64 players in the guild and every single one every single one of those players has eight accounts then you know you have 64 times eight account I mean it's just it's it's basically unlimited so any any kind of cooldown you do even if it's a weak cooldown guild top guilds are going to get around it it's just the way it is and like i said in my last video people are willing to spend upwards of a hundred dollars a month on a game so if you have 64 players each paying a hundred dollars a month that's sixty four hundred dollars they could use to be doing this so really the family fast travel i think at this point is a hundred percent debunked that it's just not a good idea you know and I honestly think I've been thinking about why they would have introduced this and I've been watching some of the um, Ashes of Creation podcasts and I think honestly the reason is is because a lot of people that work for the game company are not hardcore gamers and that makes total sense and I think that the you know devs of Ashes of Creation want people who aren't necessarily hardcore gamers to play with them and so this this is basically what they've been doing um, in the testing is they're like hey everybody get on we're gonna summon you to this so we're gonna do this today and it makes sense that they want to do that in development but I'm just gonna tell you is that these sorts of people you know not to be disrespectful they're not gonna be the type of people that are playing $15 a month to play the game I mean if they are willing to spend the $15 a month to play the game they're probably also gonna be interested in traveling around the world and seeing things so I don't really think we need this um, teleportation mechanic um, to help casuals I think that the casuals that are actually wanting to play like actually in their free time that are actually willing to pay $15 a month are not going to need their handheld to this extent so I think we can safely take this out of the game you know maybe you know using the teleportation of the scientific nodes and the you know boats and the airships I think honestly a casual player that is willing to pay $15, willing to play an MMO in their free time, is going to actually find it fun to go take a boat somewhere or take an airship somewhere or get you know teleported to a scientific node and then travel from there. I think there's nothing really that this system would accomplish um, that would not have already been accomplished in the game. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, let me know what you think. Nate Tracker signing off.